Hey guys, I'm back. It's Audrey Sivasothi with the Science of Black Hair, and today we are going to be talking about hair growth and hair growth cycles. Basically, what does the lifespan of a typical hair look like? Now, I know you guys are probably like, that sounds boring. <laughs> but I promise you, promise you that it will not be boring. We will try our best to explain it in a way that makes sense for you guys and is not going to put you to sleep. And I'm so excited to talk about it. So let's get started. So let's talk hair growth and hair growth cycles. There are four things that you really need to know about hair growth and hair growth cycles. Number one, there are four phases in the hair growth cycle. There's anagen, catagen, telogen, and exogen. Let's look at these phases a little bit more closely. Anagen, the first stage, is where our hair grows. This skin diagram shows the life cycle of a single hair. If you look at the skin diagram closely, you can see that anagen is the only phase where the root is receiving nutrition from the blood supply. Our hair spends most of its time in this phase. Anywhere from 80 to 90% of your hair is currently in an anagen growing phase. The next phase is called catagen. Catagen is just a transitionary phase where your hair bulb slowly starts to pull away from the blood supply. The scalp's blood supply gives our hair the nourishment it needs to grow from the follicle. After catagen, we have telogen, another resting phase. During this phase, the hair receives no nourishment from the blood vessels in the scalp and the hair prepares to fall. After telogen, we have exogen. This is the phase where the hair is shed or falls from the follicle. Anagen is by far the longest part of the hair growing process. Anagen phases last for years at a time. By contrast, catagen, telogen, and exogen phases are really short and usually only last weeks or months at a time. Out of all of the phases, anagen and exogen are the most important. They are the phases that we spend most of our energy focusing on because they're of course the growing phase and the phase where our hair is starting to shed. An easy way to remember exogen is to think exit. This is literally the stage where your hair makes an exit. And if you thought that was corny, take a look at how I remember anagen. Anagen becomes and it's generating, as in and it's generating hair. Let's focus on anagen for a second. During the anagen phase, hair is actively growing. It grows about a half an inch per month and the period can last anywhere from two to 10 years, but the average is four to six. Now this is a good time to talk about averages. The average monthly hair growth rate is about a half an inch per month. Of course, since it's an average, some people will have more and some people will have less. Hair growth rates vary from person to person, strand to strand, and place to place on the human body. Places like the eyebrows and eyelashes have slower monthly growth rates and shorter growth phases than the scalp for obvious reasons. The average antigen phase for a scalp hair lasts anywhere from two to 10 years, and you can fall anywhere along that spectrum. The average antigen phase for eyebrows or eyelashes is only three to six months, a big difference. Number two, each hair goes through its own growth cycle, independent of the hairs that surround it. Each hair is programmed to do its own thing. Strands grow, rest, and fall on their own schedule and repeat the process again over and over throughout your lifetime. For example, one strand may be in its second year of antigen while its neighboring strand is preparing to fall in exogen. Number three, 
Number three, each hair goes through its own phase at its own pace, regardless of the hair around it. For example, in some people, strands near the perimeter of the scalp tend to grow a lot more slowly than strands that are in other parts of the scalp. Perimeter hairs also tend to have shorter antigen phases, and the same strand may change its growth rate throughout its lifetime. Number four, our hair growth cycles and the speed at which our hair grows is controlled by our genes and our hormones. Genes and hormones play an important role in healthy hair growth. It's helpful to think of genes like the climate and hormones like the weather. The climate sets the tone and the pace for the type of weather that is possible in the same way that our genes set the pace for what type of growth is possible. Our genes set the limits and give us possible highs and lows that we can achieve. They tell us how long we could spend in each phase and basically set the baseline for growth rates and cycle lengths. Our hormones are similar to day-to-day -day weather. They vary based on the limits of the climate. Our hormones work within genetic limits and are affected by the environment around us. Our overall health, diet, age, and even the products we use can affect our hormones. A good example of hormones affecting our hair growth occurs during pregnancy. During pregnancy, our hormones lock our hair in our antigen or growing phase. Once the baby is delivered, all of those hairs quickly revert into telogen and exogen phases and our hair begins to shed like crazy. That's the phenomenon we call postpartum shedding. Hormones can also signal changes at other important moments in your life, like rapid hair growth in one's hairless areas during puberty and hair loss and thinning as we age. Since we can't control our genetics, and have very limited control over our hormones, we have to focus on areas where we do have control, and that is length retention. In our next video, we will talk about the role of terminal length in this hair growth discussion. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative, and I hope you will leave any questions or comments that you have below in the comment box. Thank you so much for your support. If you haven't already, I encourage you to check out the Science of Black Hair book because we cover so many topics there, more than we can get to obviously in this video. So check out the book. If you already have the book, I encourage you to leave us a review. Let us know what you think. We do read our reviews and we take everything you say into consideration. Again, thank you so much for watching the video and I will see you guys next time. Bye.